So we're here uh, on a beautiful San Francisco afternoon at Salesforce Dreamforce 2012. We're here in the middle of Howard Street. They closed the street just for me. <laughs> That's not quite true. They have 90,000 people here at Dreamforce and we're gonna talk to one of the guys who started Dream with Salesforce, Parker Harris. We're gonna talk about the future of Salesforce right now. So uh, first of all, you know, on behalf of Rackspace, thanks for having me here. Thanks for having Rackspace. Thanks we're, for being we're here. A happy chatter user. Yeah, we're, and we're a happy customer actually of Rackspace as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're the co-founder of, or one of the co-founders. One of, of the co-founders. Yep. Can you believe this? Can't believe it. Can't Ninety thousand people in a in, in and sunshine in San Francisco. No fog. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> You know, Mark this morning just laid out story after story after story about yeah. social enterprise. Yeah. I've been living that for five, ten, six, seven years. Have you? Yeah, well, I've, you know, I was an early blogger and, and uh, that's why Mark and I know each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the state of the business world right now and, and where's Salesforce pushing it? Well, I think you saw it this morning. You saw, obviously, our marketing and the social enterprise and where we want to take customers. and. You know, we've done all these videos. Some of the stuff in the videos really takes a huge vision forward. You take a look at the Burberry video and, and the wearable clothing with the, the RFID tags. Uh, you know, you, you look at Activision and what they want to do. And for me, you know, I'm trying to keep up. You know, we, we are a marketing driven company. We have these amazing ideas and that's actually what helps us set the course of the company. And we do the events like this and we get the feedback from all of these customers. I'm running a, a, a meeting tomorrow called True to the Core with our you know, evangelical you know, followers. They're gonna come tell me, here's what I don't like you're doing and here's what I do like. And, uh, and that's what I love is, you know, is, is they're giving me that feedback. So obviously you saw the conference, mobility, huge. We're not done, I mean, there's so much more we have to do there. Communities is brown, groundbreaking for me because the idea of don't think about your portals and your applications and your mobile apps and all those things as separate. It's just one thing, you know. And it's, you know, you've, you've lived that because yeah. you, you kind of assume it's all one thing. But in the enterprise, it's not. We have a lot of old systems. I was just talking to um, Charlene Begley at, uh, at GE. They have they've acquired hundreds of companies, thousands of companies every year, you know, for a long time. And think about the amount of systems that she's been adding. And, and then how do you deal with that? And, so I think there's new technologies that can help with that. Um, and then just how do we bring those employees forward? Because as you said, you know, your expectation is of course we're social enterprise. What's the big deal? We should be social, we should be mobile. That's my expectation on the enterprise. But you know, the enterprises aren't all there. No, Rackspace might be. Well, even at Rackspace, you know, how many employees are actually on Facebook and talking about business? Right. You know, they talk about their cats and their and their families, but yeah. they don't necessarily yeah, yeah. see it as a tool for finding customers and t helping customers and doing a new kind of customer support like what Mark is preaching. You guys are really uh, visionary. I, I mean, you just, just won Innovation Innovator of the Year Award from, I think, Fortune or something yeah. like that. Yeah, second and, year in a row. And some of the reasons for that are you're, uh, you're really thinking about the mobile phone and identity. Can you tell me what yes. you're thinking about and, yeah. and why that's so important for Salesforce? Our head of... Um, identity, Chuck Mortimer, to call it Chuck, if you, what he likes to say, if you think about the perimeter, the, the classic perimeter is, I've got my firewall, you know, it seems like engineers borrow from like castle times, you know, I've got my firewall and my bastion host. You have your firewall protecting you and your corporation is all physical and the firewall is blocking it. But now you think about us here and all these people out here, they are on their enterprise devices. Yeah. So where is that perimeter? The perimeter should be around each person or maybe each group of people in the same company. And so how do you draw that line around that mobile device and that mobile application, who that user is, and what privileges are you gonna give it? So identity is a really big idea for us. It's not, it's not just, hey, let's, let's solve single sign-on, which is frankly huge and you really need that. A metadata model around applications, those applications could be Salesforce applications, it could be other hosted applications that are clouds or behind your firewall. Wrap that metadata around them and then allow, use that metadata to say, well this application 
uh, Robert can use, and this application Parker can use, and you know, and which one are we going to roll out, which one are we testing, and enterprises don't have that granular control today. Yeah, and it goes further than what Facebook does, because Facebook I can use highlight and sign on, you know, have that yep. single sign on, yep. but you can have like applications inside applications, right? Where you right. can have SAP running in inside exactly. of Salesforce. Exactly. Yeah. Now. So so. Uh, Salesforce Canvas is the idea of bringing that application into Salesforce, but around that application, well, what's the metadata around it? Okay, it's an SAP application. Did it, was it authorized to be used or not? Was it authorized for that user who's actually now ac accessing it? Maybe it's, maybe it's serious financial information that the CFO needs to see from, your, you know, from this other system, but you know, a developer's not supposed to see it. How do you have those controls? And so that's what it's about. And certainly identity in there, single sign-on to that SAP system for, for a seamless user ex experience, you want that to happen, but yeah. then how do you control the rest around I it? could geek out with you for hours. <laughs> and uh, for the entrepreneurs who, who are listening to my show, because a lot, of, a lot yeah. of startup entrepreneurs are listening, and yeah. they all want to be in your seat. You know, they yeah. want to take your job. <laughs> they, don't, they don't want to have a 90,000 uh, person conference in yeah. San Francisco. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky. It's pretty cool. I study companies. So, I, uh, you know, I look for companies that are philanthropic, that are innovators, that are have built a company culture, and Salesforce has A pluses in all those areas. Thank you. How, how, what advice would you have for that guy who's sitting in a table in Dog yeah. Crash Labs or yeah. in, you know, plug and play in Sunnyvale or something like that? And first step is choose your uh, people you're going to work with very carefully. Choose really, really smart people that share your values. You know, when I met Mark, obviously brilliant, uh, but also from a values perspective. Um, you know, he was coming from Oracle. I wasn't totally sure if everyone from Oracle, I wasn't totally aligned on all the values from there, which is okay. But how, but how, how do you... Um, Were you they know, poisoned by Larry? Make, make sure that you align with their values, because you know, he said, you know, how do you start that philanthropy? But well, that was a piece of the value system. Yeah. And, but really, align, it's not the idea. The idea is important, but it's the people, because you're going to pivot, you know, you're going to do something, and then you're going to pivot, you're going to do something else, you're going to be with these people for a long time. And when I met our CTO, who co-founder of the company, Dave Molinoff, I said, I'm going to hook with him and, and I'm going to continue with him. Something's going to happen. And then from that, I also then met Mark Benioff with, with Dave. And I said, okay, well, we got to do this because something great will happen. And, and if something great doesn't happen at first, the next thing, you know, it's going to be this continuum. And, uh, and to that point, make sure you iterate. Make sure you try chances, but you're you know, in an agile computing sense, time box it, try it, fail fast, do it again, and be with those great people so they can be successful. How long is this social wave gonna last that Salesforce is clearly pushing and riding? Yeah, I actually see it more of a mobile wave, and social is a huge piece of that. I mean, obviously, mobility and location is what's connecting all of us right now, and I think mobility, this mobile revolution, is as big as when the internet hit us. It could be even bigger. Yeah. Are you going to continue doing the acquisition uh, cadence that you did over the last year? And do you have any insight of what you're looking to acquire over the next year? <laughs> I'm a, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to ask one question to see if I could get some strategy out of you. <laughs> so um, one of the best things we've done is we've acquired a lot of amazing companies. Yeah. Uh, some of our best leaders are actually from the acquisitions. It's also how we bring in new DNA and just stay, stay smart and, and stay nimble. Uh, we're always, always looking for great uh, companies out there. We have a lot of leaders inside of Salesforce that are always pitching ideas. How about this? How about this? You know, we're probably looking at you know a company every week, but we're not acquiring a company every week. And, and certainly, we just did a, a very large acquisition with Buddy. Yep. Um, which is, as you saw with the marketing cloud, uh, the success of that and the future there. Uh, so we'll keep looking, um, and in terms of predicting, uh, I'll let you be the predictor. Uh, uh, an extra question, <laughs> extra credit question. Are you going to do a partnership with Workday? Workday seemed to be on stage a lot today. Are, yeah. are you yeah, going yeah, to think we're, about we're financials? We're close partners with, uh, with Workday. You know, one of the things I want to see more of is if you think of Chatter and doing work in the feed, and, you're, and we're a customer of, of Workday, they're a customer of us. We are too. Many of our customers are, are, are you know, customers of Workday as well. Our systems should be more integrated together. You should be able to work within the feed, approve HR, uh, you know, approve hires, and you know, right now I'm going straight into Workday for that. 
we should just have a nice little integration as a starting point, and I'm sure there's much more we can do together. Very cool. We'll yeah. see you tonight at the uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers we'll see party. You there. Yeah. With, uh, yeah. How many people are going to be there? Like 40,000 people. I, I mean, it's know. crazy. Well the, well, the crazy thing is, I believe the symphony is having an opening as well, so we're going we're gonna to rock that house. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, and, and congrats on yeah. what you guys have done at Salesforce. It's really thank great. Thank you so much. Great interview.